So I got my VPN. So right now this is the remote desktop for Severance Middle School. Uh -huh. As of right now, I only have conversion logins for this. So we'll probably want to make you guys a login for this computer, I'm guessing. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think we manage it though. Yeah. So you'll, you'll take it over. So even better. I'm for... Yeah, I was so going to try to get on. We could take a look at that. Let's take a look at that right now. Let me, uh, go to, uh, you know how to look at the domain information? Uh, my help. I'll get there faster if you walk me through it. Right click on the window and go to computer management. See that or device manager. Go to users and groups. Yeah. Users. Yeah, I don't think it's on the domain. Hey, Justin. Is the convergent servers on the domain the little ones that they put in for? They're not. They're just they're, we're met. They're met. We have antivirus on them, though, right? No, they run Windows. Let me ask. So, Abraham. Yes. The Dell, the, the computer that we're on right now are the little Dell Precisions, correct? Yep. Yeah, so but all the little Dell. Of those. Now we have 10 of these and they're all Windows. But we're going to take them over. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what are they running? Abe? What's that? What are they running? What do you mean? What version of Windows are they running? Oh. Looks like Windows 10. It's just about right. Let's see. Yep. Just Windows 10. Okay, so this is what you would. This is the. We this is the for the one hundred two B tool, correct? Is what's yeah. on here. Yes, sir. And then the application server is different, or is it on That's this just, machine also? It's it's a web interface. So we, that we is can, on we this machine. Correct. So it runs off of this machine. Right. So, OK. And the web GUI for the interactive console is where? Um, I believe this is coming off of the interactive console itself. OK, that makes sense. So uh, take me through from, from the get go, from the start. Where is the uh, 102B tool? So I've got it pinned here to the start. So VIP, it's that. Okay. Once we open that up, I can actually, let's start this from scratch. So I already have, essentially I can save a snapshot, so save my settings, so I can open it up. But let's say you didn't know that existed. We're going to scan the network. And what's interesting about this is that the Valcom system stores the config on every one of the devices, correct? So it's fault tolerant. Uh, well yeah, yeah, the devices will hold it, and then this will hold the config as well. So if I have to restore a device, it'll give us an option to, you know, keep the device info or to. But it's not a client server 
type of thing. It's all, everything is hosted on the device itself. Yes. So right now, um, I scanned everything. I'm sorry, I wasn't talking through my steps. It pulled right. up all the devices. I clicked OK to add them all. So it's retrieving everything that it can see. And to that, I mean, to that point, it's only pulling what's at this school. Yeah, yeah. So if, it's, it's only what's on the local network. Yeah. So here you'll see this. These are the devices that are in your head end. So Application Server Pro, Pro runs off the Dell machine. There's a separate unit in the rack that's for inputs and outputs. We're going to be using this whenever we integrate with uh, Vigilon, with Access Control. I'm not sure what that integration is going to look like, but this is where our inputs and outputs sit. Inputs and outputs being the... Uh... Just like the, the triggers. So whenever the triggers, which would be the high low on voltage for like it's just a, a closing pins or opening them, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, the interactive so console is the, the uh, console. And that's the head the, not the head end, but the uh the, 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 the iPad looking thing that's at the yep. on the desk of the schools. Yep. So you got ten of those. What's the iPad? Well, we're just going to work with this one school. Like all of this is replicated yeah. each school. So let's just talk sure. about this school. Cool. The head end, this is what we're calling the Dell machine. So this is IP for the actual Dell, the dot 10. Is the head end? Yep. Okay. Outside of that, we've got our page units. So this is where all your analog zones. All the analog wires go to these guys. And each, I mean, I don't know if you care, but each paid essentially has four different channels. What are those uh, devices called? What are, what's their model? Uh, right there. It's gonna be so, an 804 and an 8004 for the expanders. And they have four inputs, correct? Four correct. out. Um, essentially, I mean, kind so of it comes, cool. it goes into the device Ethernet, and it comes out as tones, as right stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's four outputs. Each one right. of those outputs that's for a zone, if we need more power, has to plug into a uh, amplifier, correct? Correct. So from from these channels specifically, these are going to the amplifier inputs. And yeah. then on the amplifier outputs, that's where the actual analog zones are or landed or getting power from the amp. Okay. So those are the page units below. So that, can you sh show can we adjust the levels on those? How do we adjust volume on those? So you've got a is couple it through options. here? Or is it through the uh, the uh, another tool that we'll get into later? Um, three different answers. So you can do it through here. You can adjust volume at the amp because it's got a knob per channel. Yeah. That's two. And then I can adjust the bell volume through the application server pro. So we can adjust it through the app amp. Yep. So like right here, if you're looking at the screen, this is my output volume. I can mess with this, drop it down, go go higher. And then just since we're on the topic, let me let me show you on the app pro. What's the what's this called? This is the uh this is the uh, B tool, server right? pro. No, but this is the 102 B tool that we were on just a minute ago, right? Yep, correct. So so yeah, I'll and then stick with the, I'm jumping around. The other the other way to do it is uh, through the application server, right? Correct. Okay. So, and then the so let me ask you this though: If we do it through the application server, 
does it change this volume, this setting? Or no. is it a different it's, it's setting? A different setting. Each one it's of them is entirely and completely different, correct? Correct. Because Application Server Pro is it's only the bells. While this is going to be your your all call your paging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get, no. 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 What I'm asking. Let me let me make this. Uh, is the application server is sending out a digital signal with an amplitude of the, the signal that it, it it's sending within its digital signal for, yeah. for uh, audio. Correct. Once it hits the, and that's coming from, I don't know, I'm having a hard time to think of this, uh, this application server. I'm sorry. So the, the app, so can you go to the application server real quick? And then show me that device. So there's not a device here, but like, so what happened today was bells went off. Audio and, files. And Jeff gave me a it. call. It's it's not going to be, so audio files is just audio files. It's whatever's in place yeah. here. But the volumes, the volumes that I adjusted today, so they gave me a call. They said it, the tones were too loud. Um, so we'll go over this in. again. I just want yeah. this explanation for what we're doing. Okay. Okay. But here's that field I'm talking about. Yep. And that's just just per per tone per audio file. But that will affect the volume. Okay. So we talked about the page units. So inside of the 102B tool, inside of this channels tab, this is where you can adjust the input volume, so the mic volume, and then the speaker volume through this software. That's one way to do it. Okay. So like, if I show you the sign, this is one of our clocks. So far left tab, basic summary. We're not doing anything with properties. Network. This is where I signed our static IPs, and then this mm -hmm. is our, or what you may call it, our, our NTP server. Yes. Yeah. And then in time, I had to place that there as well. In this time field, this is where we did our time zone, and then we just red and green. So I don't yeah. see you guys changing that, but there's the options for that. Talk back, we haven't messed with channels. This is where you put in your dial codes and associate it to the devices. So that's okay. this 3301. And then I have everything set up to talk back. So when they press the call buttons in the classrooms, they can talk back and forth. With they the can session. talk back. And what that does, though, is that it mutes one side or the other given whoever is louder, correct? Correct. Whoever's speaking. Yep. It's like a then, CB radio. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, all, it's only one way communication. Okay. Or, yeah. Um, so once we go, once we install the double-sided clocks, we're going to make sure those are one way because we're going to, we're not going to, I don't expect this famous talking from the hallways back to the front desk. Okay. Um, outside of that, what I want to show you, I ended up removing these. We initially started with the privacy tone setting. That was that beep every 15 seconds that interrupts the conversation. Yeah. Um, we initially started with it because Dan mentioned this is how you know that. There's a, a Some, call in yeah. place. Yeah. So it, there's not just someone listen, listening, creeping. So the other um, one was so, an announce tone that'll beep into the into the room first, right? Right. We don't have that checked now, correct? No. I removed that okay. everywhere. Okay. So these settings, I pretty much copy-pasted throughout. Good. Um, the next thing I did with these speakers is we have those call buttons in the classrooms. Since there's mm -hmm. two buttons, I needed to make sure I had it as normal and emergency. By default, it's normal and it, and it won't work. So switches so to normal, normal and emergency. And as of right now, 
I've got him just calling the interactive console. That's the dial code for it, 7295. Because I believe the plan is whenever SIP's in place, we'll have that call something else. That's correct. We're going to have it call a hunt group at each school. Okay. And it'll okay. go to the entire administrative staff and they'll know it's an emergency. Perfect. Relays, you don't have to mess with. The only other there, thing. There are Sorry. relays in the, there are relays in the, uh, like, we don't need them. Never mind. I'm, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you won't. I think the clocks have some, but yeah. They do. We we're not using them. Um, flashers, this is where I activated flashers. And since we only picked the three events, um, you'll see in the application server pro, I assigned the three events this 95 priority level, and that's how they, they link up. And it knows what to send a flash to. Okay. That's what this means. Um, signage, this is all default. And group membership, this is how I associate the speakers. So when you press all call this speaker, you know, any of these groups, it's only as of right now, it's only a part of interior all call and district all call. So doesn't it need to be all the SRPs have to be selected also so they could be a part of those groups or not? It, it doesn't because th those are set up through the application server pro. So it's, it's not it's not paging through these units. OK, because it's beginning from the head end, correct? Yeah, exactly. From the uh, application server. And I'll show you okay. this. So that makes sense. You select the groups for the devices. You don't select it for the console or else the console will be a speaker. And I don't, you know, yeah. so, so they're not hearing themselves page. So that's why those yeah. are removed. Um, the last one we have left is SIP. And I just, I haven't done anything with that yet. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, I, I, we should be able to get that going pretty, pretty soon. You know, I mean, I'm happy to help with programming. I was going to start putting in these dial codes, but I wasn't sure. Wait for Jeff. We need to get some things taken care of yeah. first. Exactly. So I just left it as is. Um, but that means so this will show you the list of devices. The last head end thing we have is the SIP controller. So that is a separate device that sits in the MDF that yeah. is plugged into the network that is a SIP connector. Yep. Okay. And then you can find your Mac and whatnot here. And we've got a couple different channels on it, but we're done. I haven't, haven't even utilized this. So, so the, the devices that we have are, are pretty simple. We have the yep. 55, the, the 550, we have the 520, and we have the, uh, the paging devices, right? Mm -hmm. and that's um, about yeah, it. So the the only thing that's not sitting on your network is the new amplifiers. And that that's in your rack, and that and then that's it. We got the I/O unit. Yep. We have one of those, one SIP controller, interactive console, and the the head end, which is the uh, server, right? Yep, that's the dough. So can you show me on that paging system on the page real quick? On one of those, there's two channel or there's four channels on it, correct? Yep. So it's here where we can adjust the level for the, each one of those channels, correct? The level in terms of volume? Yeah. Yeah, volume. So the dial code that you have is 7266. Uh, I'm assuming that this, this may have two channels on it. Can we take a look uh, at the center channel? So I, I set up dial codes. I put them in place for all of these. Um, for us to see what's actually being used, we'd look at the group membership. And that's where I assigned 
I'll call district. Oh, so that is how, so on the page device itself, you will select the, uh, on the device itself, you tell it what group it needs to be in. Exactly. So like we, we metered one of your analog wires, found out it was interior, we terminated it, terminated it on channel one, and then we, we labeled it an interior speaker. So it would fire anytime an interior page is done. Can you go back to inputs real quick? Where does it say interior? So the channels? It's the, the interior is only in the group membership here in the tool. Channels only shows you the dial codes. I can put it in a description here. So how did you change the, the can you change, how did you change the group membership name? Group membership, so that's gonna be under system and audio groups. So interior right here. I would type it in and then click update. Those so are the groups. Are you, you can add more groups group. also, correct? Yeah, and I think we're going to end up doing that because as it sits right now, we have classrooms and the common zones and an interior group. So all the bell schedules are hitting the classrooms and it sounds like we need to separate those. So it's only the common areas for the pages. Correct. So this is where I'm going to do it. Okay. So is it using that dial code to be able to hit it? Correct. So at the interactive console, if you hit this 7298 for interior, it's going to hit. Watch, I'll show you the group membership now. So we've got a little button here. So if I go to interior, it'll show you everything that's on this group. Okay, so we're just, we're we just looking at it from a different button. angle. Yeah, there's a few different ways to get there. This looks like a better way to do it because you can go to the interior 100%. and select the things you want. Yeah, Dan Dan loves swears by these buttons right here. He's probably the one that told him to make them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess we, we can go through the buttons. So. No, that makes sense because the the thing the, the 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 problem I had was just understanding what channel was what, and that explained it. I believe. Yeah. So to your point, I should have labels here, but we were just, we're, we're still like commissioning this. So I still got to clean this up. So go back to group membership real quick. So channel one, it's here. If you change channel, if you go to channel two, yep. it has, it, it can have different. Okay. Yep. That makes channel sense. Three, it's, it's per channel. Okay. So here I didn't have anything collect, connected. So three and four are just blank. That makes on sense. This. Okay, good. Um, so that's groups. This is the button for the audio groups that we clicked from the drop down, anyways. Outside of that, um, I, if you can see the state of everything, when it's, you'll see the legend down here. So normal status is what we want. Anytime we make changes, watch, I'll just do it right now. Let's say turn this red. And I hit apply. It's going to turn blue. And the process is you always need to update and then it'll turn green. So we've got an update button right here. And that updates everything. Yes, we want to continue. After it updates, it's going to turn green. And now that's prompting for a reset. And that's what does the power cycle. I'll hit yes. And then we're looking for a normal state to make sure that speaker is online. So but it's I mean, blue. Yeah, just, yeah, so I mainly wanted to show you this legend so you're aware of the colors. So does it go green now? Yeah, so after, it just goes back time to... after an update, it'll, it'll, it'll want to reset, but I think it was still resetting. I didn't let it boot up yet. Not screen. It's green. And, and then you have normal. Once you it's, have to reset. Yeah. You have to, to reset push. it. For, okay. If it's green, that means it has a change that's been committed. You have to reset it to make it happen. And then it'll yeah. go back to a normal state 
which would be just yep. the regular grid. Okay. Yep. This is what you want to see. Um, I know we're still missing devices at, at most of the schools. So once they add them, this is the button I'm going to hit. Just scan the network, and this should pull in anything that's that's missing, and then it'll yeah. pull it in red. And then error status. If we would have found something, a window would have popped up and let us know if we want to add it or not. Okay. I mean, so other than that, um, I like saving the snapshot. So it'll essentially save all these devices I scanned in. Or did it save it? That's like a backup oh. then, right? Yeah, it's just, it's kind of like a backup. It is, from what, from my knowledge, it just saves these names. So, like what? So, how did you do that? Uh, I'll show you. It's this save button, this floppy disk. Okay. So, because I have it saved, when I when I'm opening this for the first time, I'm just going to open up that file. So, I'll go down here to open and work the save snapshot. Yeah. Instead of having to rescan everything. But so would you want to? Would you be better off rescanning everything? I mean, so you'll see right now. It, I think it's kind of the same thing because even though it populates everything, I still have to verify it all. So this might be a little bit faster, but you're essentially, you know, you're doing a scan more or less. So I want to verify these devices. I'll click all, and this will just check in with everything. And we should have green coming up soon. Verification is complete, close, and now everything's back to normal. And I can do stuff. The only other thing that I did use on here when we had lost a device every now and then, I'd hit this network diagnostics. But I really only use this with tech support. They were able to load a device from here. But another screen you might want to play with. Okay. Um, you've got the same, these icons, you're going to have the same options up here. Reset, update. And that's that's pretty much it. I think um I don't think I've shown you this. So under programming, this is how you can do like audio mass volume adjustment, exactly. audio adjustments. Exactly. The beautiful thing about this is um if this won't reset the device for whatever reason. So we can we can cook the page one, I can move it over. And it's already adjusted. We can test it. If we don't like it, they can just cancel and it'll go back. So, how can we go single channel and multiple channels? What's the difference between that? The multiple is how I can select everything. Otherwise, if I have it single, I can just do one speaker at a time. See? Okay. That's all. So, this is where you can. Yeah, just look at everything. And as you can see, for the most part, everything's set up identical besides Media Center. Cool. So I'd say that's that's the gist of the 102B tool. That's everything I used it for. Um, I guess I lied. Last thing would be complex. This will show you if you have any three digit, just anything that, that it doesn't like. Um, if, if, if it has a problem with anything, like, like yeah, what complex, like, if there's a IP address, duplicate, duplicate dial codes, duplicate IPs. Um, we have this set up for a four digit dial code. So by default, these devices come in with a number with a three digit. So that'll throw an error. So this is a dial code length. We, we that has to be changed when you were setting up a new system. We're doing yep. four digit dial now. Okay. Correct. It started with the three. Cool.
So if you Sounds add a device, good. you'll notice, yeah, hey, error, dial code three, and then you just change it. Um, so that's that. Now, here's the application server pro. We, the way we log it to this is just through the website, correct? Yep. And at all the sites, you'll notice every, every application server pro ends in a dot bomb. You have five minutes left in your meeting. Oh, oh man. So is it going to continue or is it going to shut off the recording at, at five? Honestly, I don't know. I'd like okay. to think this will keep going. Let's see. Well, we'll see. So initially, to get this going, I mean, I'm just telling you because sure I know you want to know everything. Since you're in the IT side of things, this is how we added I love you guys because they gave me that backup. Okay. But restore backup. We have an upgrade of the software. I'm sure that'll happen after the firmware update. Um, here, really, all I messed with was clock for the NTP. I have a question first. We have system. Yeah. And then we have security, uh, shutdown, and reboot. That those shutdown and reboots only happens for it's for the security server. It's for the application server pro, correct? Correct. Yeah. Does that just shut down and restart the application, or does it restart the whole computer? The dot eleven. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'd have to follow I, up if, on that one. If I remember correctly, they did a restart on the service because I'm pretty sure this application server pro is a service. It's just a service, and the yeah. More than likely, because so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna go with it like that because I was uh, Dan reset it and then he got into it immediately. I was like, oh, the thing rebooted that fast. He's like, oh yeah. I was like, whoa, that's interesting. So now I understand why. Okay, go for it. Because it's not go okay. for the physical hardware. Okay, shut down. I ain't doing that. Um, so clock. This is where I put our NTP server in. So I would just be conscious of the time. If that ever glitches, then everything's gonna be off. Yep. But. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen any issues that that's in place. That's been good. Um, you saw you, I, we talked about users earlier. Um, initially, it just comes with a security role, which is very default. So I started by creating the role so I could assign the privileges. Um, disable means you're not going to see it. Limited means you get view access. Full means you can do it. You can change. You yeah. can edit stuff. So for the time being, I believe we're good with just graphics, schedule, and calendar for the front desk. That's essentially why, why I created the staff. I don't like you. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mess around with it. Like, we yeah. need to understand it and we need to understand who has access, but you're going to be setting yeah. up that for us uh, anyway. So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll mess around with that later. Um, I don't see you guys using group codes for this. It's just more integration, more implementation, but I, I don't see the use for this in terms of a user role here. Okay. So we create, I created the user staff and then I just attached it to the, to this user. Yep. Um, other than that, we have an option to tell it what, what startup tabs are in place. So. And the tabs at the top just, left, right? Security users roles, those tabs. It, it's going right? to be these. Yep. So yeah. I'll, sh I'll show you that login right now. 10, 22, 16. We'll, we'll go, what did I say? Staff. And for the time being, I, I, I shot an email to uh, Jeff, but yeah. for the temporary passwords on these, I just don't say, it. Last don't, say it. Okay. don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, we're getting recorded. Yeah, I forgot. Um, so. GES twenty three. Okay. So I just want to show you the homepage, what they're gonna see. Or not.
Oh, this is 23, that's why. So, just hitting the wrong school. So as soon as they log in, I think this was the best page to give them instead of the graphics. I think this they'll be calendar? using this more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And since we're here, um, I essentially created a date group and then I added every single Monday to Friday to it. You can only do up to a year. So this is set okay. up through July, 2024. Okay, so we have, yeah, okay. And so up here on the regular days, if you click on Sunday, you can essentially program something to happen every single Sunday of the calendar year. That's what these do. Every Wednesday of the calendar year, Thursday, Friday, etc. Okay. Um, if you click on a day, it'll tell you if there's a, a schedule assigned to it. So if I click on the 15th or the 16th, it'll show the Monday to Friday regular bell schedule. And as you can see, it highlights like this is how we we engage the group. So it highlights it this yellow color. Okay. Um, so what happened today was we set up, I think it was Windsor Middle School, and they had a special schedule just for today. So what I did was I still had the regular date group in place, and then I just hit Wednesday. And I'm able to add a, a schedule here to override it. I don't have any other schedules in place, but if I had a second option, I could just put it in. And this would override the Monday to Friday schedule. After what do you mean? Activate. So, like, like right now, are, this schedule's this schedule's in place, right? Yep. You're and like this to the, me. This looks like. Exactly. To me, this looks like you're programming every Wednesday in the calendar. You would if you if you did the Wednesday from the regular weekdays up here. So if I hit Wednesday you, here and then I add it does every up. Wednesday in the whole calendar, right? Correct. What about override week? Override, it only does it seven days ahead, essentially. So if I hit Wednesday, this would be this Wednesday. So like watch, I'll just assign it so you can see it. It'll turn red after we activate there. Now you see this guy is activated on this day only. Okay. So there's a few steps to it. You have to add the schedule to the override day, and then you also have to make sure you activate it. And the different schedules have different colors? Yes, so I'll show you that next. So um, I ended up starting with schedule editor first. I hit create a schedule. And tabs. So it's important to note that all the tabs take up resources or if you have if you have a tab open where they're along that tab bar or whatever you want to call it. If you have the schedule editor open twice, you can only have it open once. So you have to close all the other schedule editors, right? Yeah, unfortunately. So, schedule editor. So here's the schedule. I'll just hit create so you can see it. You'll name it. I get lost, so lost with this. So I named it and after that, you get to the screen. And you add events. So as of right now, I've been using that bell tone all. That's the one that they seem to like. And then this is a military military time. So if we wanted to do two o'clock, it's gonna be fourteen hundred. Okay. Hours, minutes, seconds. So I'll hit fourteen hundred. And I think for ease of use with the um, with the front desk, since they're gonna be managing this. And this is how I set it up too. I'm only putting in a start time. I'm not putting in a stop time. So 1400, you'll see that populate there. And I can add another one. So if they had a you know recess from 1400 to 1430, 
then I'm just going to put 1430 here. I'm just make another line, submit. So you're just creating two tones. It's the same it's, tone, you're, you're, two different times. It's two, at two different times. At yeah. two different times. So the stop time doesn't matter. That's, yeah, it doesn't. Okay. So I'll show you what I put in place for Monday to, like this is their Monday to Friday. This is what they had for passing periods and everything. So I'm assuming, thinking you might want to change, you know, down the road between a differentiate between a class change and end of day school. Just, you know, we can use a different, kind of a different tone. Exactly. And you would just pick it here under the event. Okay. So I started by, I was given the schedule. I inputted all these rows. Once I had that in place, I went over to the calendar. I added this day group, and then I had to click every single day to make it green. Oh, you asked about the green. So I'll add another day group, and this is where you select your color. Okay. The only thing I don't recommend is going for this yellow because once it activates, it's going to look identical. So I'd stay away from yellow. Okay, and we can access the calendar from the main application server, correct? Correct. So I'm going to log back in as an admin. Log out. There's the calendar. As you saw, um, I don't know if you saw on the staff, they don't have the option to clear the calendar. If we hit this, it deletes the date group. It'll clear everything. All right. Um, when I initially started this, I picked our start month, August. And that's why I put it in first. Okay. So that's calendar. Graphics. This is the I love you guys. That we're familiar with. So. If they ever activate it here, I, I think you saw that the icon will change, showing you that it's active. Yeah. You can either you can either hit the button again to stop or just stop all at the top. It's the easy one. Well, that's only using it through the application server on the. Yeah. Through, through iPad through the, thing. Yeah. Now, if we do it through the iPad looking thing, we ended up adding a stop all button. I don't know if you've seen that since. No, no, let's not go there yet. Let's finish this first. Okay. <laughs> jumping around. But correct. So separate separate interfaces. Um, the only reason we have the shelter little tab down here is because we had shelter weather, shelter hazmat. Yeah. So once you click it's on just shelter, different graphic groups, right? It'll give you the option to hit it here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different different uh, image groups. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, this is. The audio files is what's already existing, what's in place, so what you can choose from. Do you so adjust the, the volume on those? No. I mean, potentially, I haven't messed with this redu reduction amount. I'm guessing that might do something. Oh, you can't even edit it, so never mind. So these are just the, the files you would actually import. Where I did our changes was an event editor. Because I created bell tone all, and then you associate what what file, what audio file goes to it. Okay. And then, so this is where you saw 120 seconds earlier for the other school. And they mentioned that that the page at one of the schools was really loud, but the, that the voice volume was good. So I ended up adjusting the dBs here down because this is just for this bell tone. Okay. And then we associate what group code. We want to use with this, so as it sits right now, when the bell schedule is just hitting every speaker. So this is what I'm going to end up changing if if we got to do, you know, one bell for exterior, the next bell for interior kind of deal. Okay. I'll just end up putting interior and exterior. So 
So those are events. And then when we were with Dan, this is where you saw the playlist editor. And this is what groups the text and the audio together. Okay. This is already set, so I don't see you guys messing with this. And lastly, if you want to mess with icons, here they are. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, other than that, help videos will probably give you a better presentation, honestly, than what I did. They're 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 not bad, dude. I honestly looked at the calendar here. It was it was pretty pretty thorough, pretty easy. Okay. But just another reference. Good. And I believe that's everything I touched. I just want to change password on here. Nope. So let's take a look at the uh, uh, iPad looking thing. What's it called? Cool. So this is the interactive console. Interactive console. So as soon as you log in, this is what you see. And you lo you're logging in directly to that console, is what yep. this essentially is. Yep. So as soon as I log in, the first place I go to is layout, and this shows you, this is where we create the buttons and the display for the console. Okay. So I had to add a button, label it interior, associate the interior group with it, save, and then we could change the colors, so, and delete right here. So I'll show you interior right here. This is all the programming that exists right now. So could Color. we put a map in? Could we put a map in there and do buttons and stuff? I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to Dan about how to do that. To be honest, I haven't messed with maps. Because that's what we would like to do is be able to click on a, a room and that would come up you can you, you know from a map that would be epic right but at least for pages yeah. you can make it easy but. yeah yeah no i got you but i mean yeah this essentially shows this and is this will change when we do an update added. right yep yep so what i was getting at earlier when we were messing with the graphics and I love you guys. Yeah. Um, after after we push this this backup, we no longer were able to stop all from the console. It was only from the application server pro. So I worked with Dan to add a stop all button. That's what this is. So the stop all is on all devices, correct? On on all the consoles. So Good. if they hit and evacuate, they're gonna stop it by hitting this stop all button. Good. And so that's layout users. This is where I changed our pin, essentially. It's not much to it, is there? No. If you click on dashboard, this this is pretty much it's it's supposed to be like the web interface for the console. So you can't do a page from my computer, obviously, because of the mic situation. But I can hit any of these pages through this dashboard. So this is like another graphics page, essentially. Uh, it's not as pretty. Settings. There are no are all of them dot though. six? Yes, everything's dot six for these. All right, that's it. Then that's it. In their columns, yeah. this is where you actually put the dial code in and page each each classroom individually. Hit it. Hit it. Configure it. Let me see it. It won't. It won't let me. Because I don't what have do a, you mean? A, a microphone device from my laptop. Well, that's how you can do it. But you can edit the button, though, right? 
like how did you tell it to do what it's do what it's supposed to do this is already default i didn't have to create this intercom so i'm, I'm assuming it just knows because it's in this intercom tab. so yeah this was default i didn't tell it to do anything i didn't associate a group didn't even name it but you can pick the colors here okay you're not worried about priorities here because that's all set through the application server pro. Okay. Um, and that's kind of it. If you want to trash a button, you can trash it. Other than that, you're going to edit in here. No, there's the syslog piece of it too that Dan's using now also. Yeah, we, we, had, we had to do this, yep, for the stop all button. Well, you also had to do it for something else, if I remember correctly. Mm. Take a look at some of the other buttons. I think it was the has. Because all these, Don't all these talk, all these talk back to the application server pro, the dot twelve. Yeah, so and they're then, all doing a syslog. So what yeah. what's happening is is that there was supposed to be some type of a uh, drop down that made it simple. What this. Yep system is doing the interactive console is sending a syslog message back to uh 116.12 which is the application server that syslog mm -hmm. message gets picked up through the log aggregator then is processed and an action happens that is how the alerts are triggered if i remember correctly Right. Right. Yeah, that was our workaround, essentially. Yeah. So I just wanted to so, make sure that we had that documented, so like we remember yeah. that's one of the things that it's doing, and it's triggering on secure lockdown hold or whatever. Yep. All those. All those. I love you guys. And then I just want to show you. I had to put it in only for the interactive console here, so it knows to go to that application server pro. Okay, so where in the application server are those syslogs processed? Can you show me that? Because we skipped over that. Mm. Was it a back end thing or was it? Was I'm thinking so. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to remember, know, he had. You just have to ask Dan. Write it down. We're not supposed to do it, but it's a bug. And then we, have we that. were ha we did have that we had, bug with the with the talk yeah, slow. Slow talking happened also during the setup of this system. What happened was is that they had, we had changed some of the volumes on the. Uh, I think we just changed the audio messages. We changed the audio message because it does voice to text, right? Yeah. And it's using a uh, voice to it's using a digital voice, and then they were using voice to text to translate it. What happened was is that the 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 voice to text person that was speaking when we when we edited the voice to text text that it was going to read, it right. changed the default value. For the speed at which it talks, so it made it really slow. And they had to change a value on the back end in a configuration file on the server to make it work. Right. And I, I'm just getting that documented. So if we ever have a problem with that again, we can go back to this and maybe maybe figure it out. See, I believe I saved that. Let me see where I have that. And all they did was send a a backup of the config, right? Exactly. Yep. All right. We're good to go. Cool. We we can do this again too. Um, yeah, just let me know. Uh, but we might not have to. If this video, if if you can send me this video, and I can transcode it and then post it on YouTube, and I will edit some of the things out because I think I I probably use some offensive language here and there. Um. <laughs> I'll go through it and scrub it out and we'll we'll be good. Okay. Perfect.
If you can send it to me at a, in dot MOV or AVI, it would be great. If you can't, then I'll figure out how to, I'll transfer it if I have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how to send this because I think we're looking at over an hour. Yeah. So, but I'll figure it out and I'll get it, I'll get it going to you. Um, send it to you and Jeff, I'm assuming. Just uh, send it to me because then I'll be the one that processes it and does stuff. Okay. Understood. All right, man. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. You're very welcome. Happy to help. Take it easy. Have a good night. Okay, you too.